Hey, mage players, are you tired of people running all over the place, five stacks of assassins, and overestimating your skills? Maybe it's time for a change. Consider Deckard Kane. He looks like a mage, he plays like a mage, and you don't even need to hit your spells, sort of. Plus, you might relate more to Deckard compared to other healers, as he's closer in age to everyone who still plays Blizzard games. His heals aren't as quick as other healers, and he's not as spry as he used to be, so you'll need to use the tools of the old and wizened that the youths just don't have yet. Experience and foresight. A Deckard that knows when and where the next brawl could be is a Deckard that is in complete control of the fight, but a Deckard that lives in the moment will find that he doesn't have many of those left. Short-sighted assassins might scoff at your pile of pots, but once they get a taste of the three potion special, they'll be begging for more of Grandpa's medicine. Grandpa's got the good stuff. Oh, and you will need to stay hydrated as Deckard through tapping or backing. Your bladder just can't hold on to mana anymore. It's rare, but from time to time, some uppity fart might complain about not having heals cracked over their head as if any healing could get through that thick skull. But look, if Deckard is already spot healing, it's probably not the best time to take a fight. Healing priority targets is the bare minimum. He's old. Give him a second. Even a single potion on the ground is doubling Deckard's healing. Imagine all five. Yeah, it's not always feasible to max out on potions in or before a fight, and people do rightly expect you to heal them when needed, don't miss. But since you, as Deckard, aren't going to be spamming abilities or auto-attacking, mostly, there's really no excuse not to litter the area with potions. Hells, even scattering them around on cooldown can help in the long run. You never know when an errant potion will come in handy. Plus, you'll get a good feel for how people behave around your potions. Some people are greedy. But everyone's different. Having an idea of who will do what lets you start placing pots more thoughtfully. In fact, in my experience, there's a few shapes you can make to maximize healing and safety. The crown. The wedge. The banana. Where you place your potions can influence the direction of the fight as people back up for a breather or run for their lives. A straight line can be great for saving someone, but also shows the enemy team exactly where to aim, so having some healing offset from the line of travel opens up more space for dodging while maintaining the flow of hit points. But don't, don't obsess over that all too much. Those are just patterns I've noticed making while anticipating fights, and if you're focused on having the perfect setup, you'll find that you'll have a beautiful line of potions and a whole lot of dead teammates. Remember, available potions are always better than theoretical ones. Speaking of theory, I don't usually get into talents in these videos as they're more about the base kit of the hero, but I do want to mention his level 4 specifically as it could result in some angry messages. Mana potions, still here. The most generally useful potion and my personal favorite, but arguably the worst choice in the list. The heal over time is less overall health than the shield from the shield pots, and Ruby just does the most healing, so rejuvenation potions are less useful in a pinch. Really, you take this talent for the 15 mana the potions give. This helps sustain longer fights and lets mana-hungry tanks and assassins output two or three more abilities than they could with base regeneration, which can result in a win if both teams clash and yours has mana where the enemy team does not. I remember reading somewhere that the heal over time benefits from spell power buffs, so 10% more magic gets you 10% more instant and 10% more delayed heal, but I can't find anything off my rigorous single Google search so take that with some salt. Also, the heal over time does not stack and is refreshed when a new potion is picked up. This talent and the shield are the easiest to get value from in uncoordinated play. Shield pots. These shields combined with spell power and super potions will allow you to create the strongest potions. The most possible healing granted on one Q. Great for saving focus targets. If you need to give just one person as many hit points as possible, this is the option you pick. The shield won't stack with itself, and you can't put the shield on top of a full health bar as it only triggers when the hero is healed. Lil Pots heal you lots. You can output crazy amounts of healing with Ruby. And the skinny pots only heal for 35 less than a raw Q at level 1, but... I wouldn't pick Ruby unless you know for damn sure you can get these potions up your teammates' ass without them knowing. Whenever I have a stroke and play solo queue quick match, I hardly ever see anyone pick up these potions even when they're called out. The size is misleading, they just don't look that juicy. So players don't trust that running back into the fight will actually result with them having more health? I don't know man, Ruby has by far the highest healing output of all the talents in this tier, and it's fantastic in coordinated play, but with randoms, your mileage may vary. There, that should stop your DMs. For those of you who stopped watching here, let me know who you are down below by leaving silly comments. I'll hail the algorithm. Healing Potion is a potion that heals. You can drop it on people's head or leave it on the ground. Up to five can be active on the map at once and they don't despawn until you start placing more over this cap. While they do a fair bit of healing, it's pretty telegraphed. Plus, you can never be sure which way your friends will go. The time the potion is in the air is the most dangerous time for everyone. 
Horadric Cube is arranged slow over a decently sized area. Super easy to apply, great for starting fights and ending them. Never underestimate the power of arranged slow. This ability is great on its own, but is often used in combination with... Scroll of Sealing. A large, triangle-shaped root that takes a long time to trigger. Which then roots whoever's inside for one and a half seconds. Plenty of time to get comboed on. Because of this, you may find that you'll only manage to root the dumb and distracted. No one wants to get caught by this. Once enemies see the windup, they generally clear the area. Use this to create space, either splitting up the enemy team or making it incredibly costly for them to engage on your friends. Scroll of Sealing is also superb follow-up for CC chains. A little bit of practice, and before you know it, you'll be turning triangles into corpses. Deckard's trait is quite powerful, but the thing about his D is he needs someone around to keep it up. Fortitude of the Faithful grants armor and reduces the cooldowns of Kane's basic abilities by 50% when standing in range of an ally. This makes him tankier than people expect and lets him position more aggressively, allowing Deckard to survive dives, enabling riskier plays, and letting him spot heal more quickly. Just try not to eat potions meant for your friends. Stay a while and listen is a sleep that, after one second of channeling, covers a massive area in front of Deckard. Despite what the ultimate does, talking to old people is usually not this boring. You can sleep the entire enemy team with this, setting them up for a huge combo, interrupting a teamfight, or preventing a chase. It's not the hardest of lockdowns, but it comes out fairly quickly and can stop a fight before it starts, or provide enough disruption to trip up the enemy's plans. Be sure to cancel the spell so you can move again if you miss or you're expecting trouble. Lornado is way, way, way more fun than stay a while, but can be applied in fewer scenarios. Use it to peel enemies off you or your friends, or catch someone, pulling them into your team. Though this takes practice and you might be better off holding the spell for another reason, Lornado can be used to interrupt channeled abilities, split up the enemy team, or just be obnoxious. I like to use it as a force field if I need to make an escape, casting it in the direction I need to go and running away inside the spell. If you love to play ability-based ranged assassins, you can't go wrong with the oldest man. While you won't be making the picks, the absurd amount of control you provide for your team keeps that kill feed flowing. Just watch your mana. In general, playing Deckard will improve your game sense as you need to anticipate where fights will be and how they play out. And with all of his healing, armor, and crowd control, personal positioning mistakes aren't punished as harshly compared to other healers. Overall, Deckard Kane is a solid uh, Overall, Deckard Kane is a solid addition to any team and a great choice if you love to fight. Hey, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you want to casually sweat it out in Quick Match or ARAM, I play games with my Discord every second Friday. Link in the video and channel description. I think that's Oh yes, like, comment and subscribe. Overall, Deckard Kane is a solid addition. Solid addition. Solid addition. Solid addition. Solid addition.